excited to have Laura Todd from Laura Ashley Catering, where she will be dishing out what it is to run a catering business and working in the events industry and so much more. So Laura, thank you for being a guest today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you excited for to be time. here. Your studio is so beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited because you have so much that you're going to be discussing. Yeah. But let's start with telling everyone who Laura Ashley Catering is, like the brand. Well, uh, my name is Laura. Um, I've owned Laura Ashley Catering for 10 years. Um, I'm That's actually, years. yeah, I know. It, it went by really fast. Um, I've been a trained chef for the past 15 years, 15, 16 years. I, you know, I don't know exactly, but um, went to culinary school, got my degree, worked in several properties and worked for some high-end catering companies in Palm Beach, did some traveling in my 20s. And then um, when I turned 30, I decided, well, I got to put down some real roots and, you know, stay in a job long enough to get promoted. And I didn't like corporate and I was like, well, let me, let me start my own business. And I kind of just jumped off the cliff. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but I just kind of dove into it and here we are. <laughs> so it's gone really well, really, really well. 10 years. Congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you. When you first decided to start the business, what were some of the thoughts that were going through your mind? It's so crazy. When I first started, um, it was more like a private chef type of thing. And I, I had an idea like, well, I'll work at Panera Bread in the daytime and then I'll do my little cocktail parties at night. And I, I think I thought it was going to be very small. And then it just gradually grew. And we ended up doing weddings and cocktail parties. And so it expanded. Um, but uh, it's just been an amazing ride. And it's, it's just been awesome. And it's just, I, I tell people, it's like a lily pad. You know, you just jump from lily pad to lily pad and it, it gets bigger. And that's beautiful. It's yeah. Like yeah, it's just, that's an easy way to put it, you know. <laughs> so you started with the company, like you said. And so it was kind of one of those things where you always knew you wanted to own your business. Or was it, like you said, you were just tired. You didn't like corporate. And you're like, I'm just going to do something on my own. Like, yeah. What were your feelings going at that moment? Like, how nervous were you? What were some of the thoughts? And what year? And more or less, like, did the company start? So, um, 2015 is when we officially started. And like I said, I just, I really, I thought it was just going to be small and just like a side gig. You know, I didn't, ex I didn't expect, I had no idea that it would turn into what it's turned into. If you would have told me 10 years ago, I'd be sitting with like, lights and a camera and I'd be on a podcast I would have told you you were crazy you know so I mean it's just like it just hasn't ceased to amaze me like the growth and the opportunity here in South Florida it's yeah, amazing and it's an amazing company tell everyone a little bit of who Laura Ashley Catering is because not only are I would say you guys are bespoke catering because it's Thank premium you. luxurious and also very detailed where it's not just food being displayed. I, I was very lucky to go to the Halloween event mm. where I was mind blown. I was like, who are these people? They are oh. creatives. Like Thank you I so need much. to know who's behind the party. Did you go to it was the, the prom one? The it was the one at the uh, court, like the like the high school. Okay, the home haunted homecoming. Ha homecoming. Ha yes. Yeah, okay. the haunted yeah. homecoming. So that one and I was like the displays, the way things yeah. were being passed out and everyone was dressed up. So mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit to those that don't know who the company is like. During a week, like on a Saturday at most, I'll take two weddings and that's enough, you know, yeah. because these weddings and these events are so detailed, you have to be on top of it to, to execute them properly. Um, so we're a very boutique creative company. Um, clients only work with me one-on-one -on -one, um, as far as sales. Like I'm the only salesperson in yeah. our company. You know, we just, we try to curate an event that's very thoughtful, a menu that's very thoughtful. Um, we redo our menus every year. Do you redo them every year? Yeah, every summer. Wow. So I have a, like a secret, like on my phone, on my notes, like, Every time I see something cool, like if I'm at a restaurant or I'm going somewhere all throughout the year, I will take notes in this one spot on my phone. And then when I go to recreate menus, I have like a whole list of everything I've seen that's cool and unique over the past year. And so I'm able to like build a new menu. And, you know, I mean, a catering company, there's always trends. Yes. And so some stuff on a menu will work and some stuff won't. So you got to like, you know, you have to redo it every year. You should. 
You should. To stay on top of, you know. That's what keeps you. Yeah, it keeps you current. Yeah, it keeps you current. And Mm -hmm. the fact that, so, like, for you, you'll see things as, you know, you're a business owner. You see everything from a different look. So oh, yeah. you go to a restaurant or a lounge or anywhere, you're probably thinking like... Inspired by anything. I mean, like, you've seen some of the stuff I've done. Like, you know, like, pirate theme. I mean, you know, we actually, as a company, we took a trip to Disney World to, like, specifically ride Pirates of the Caribbean, like, five times. So we could, like, just That's be amazing. immersed in, like, these vignettes that Disney created. And then... When we went um, this summer, in September, we went to Salem, Massachusetts, because I do this big Halloween party every year, and we went to Salem, Massachusetts, and we stayed there for, like, a week, and we just, like, were immersed in Halloween. Um, We just try to do fun stuff, you know? It's, like, all in my mind, and we just try to be fun. It's a party, you know? You have to make it fun for people. But the fact that you're taking your team Mm -hmm. to have this experience is because you want them to be as like passionate and also as like flowing with ideas. And that's so important. The fact that you also care about your company morale and team yes. building. Yes. Yeah. No, they love working for us. <laughs> <laughs> you can't steal any of it. <laughs> no, it's, re- it's a lot of fun. And that, I mean, my philosophy is we all have to work at, and as event industry professionals, we work hard. This is, you know, event planning and catering. It's, it's, it's been voted like one of the top most stressful jobs. So yeah. we all have to have jobs. We all have to have work and, you know, we have to go to work every day. It might as well be something fun that we enjoy and it's a place where we want to go. You yeah. know, that's my philosophy on running a good business is create an atmosphere where people want to come and be a part of it every day. And that's amazing. So when you were first building your team, like, okay, so when you first started, it was just you mm-hmm. and it was just me for like just the first year, just like hustling, packing trucks, doing all the cooking, all the shopping, cleaning, everything. Everything. I mean, I, I would hire servers, but on the back end, it was just me for like the first year and a half. And then I was able to save enough money to hire my first sous chef. And um, she was an amazing, amazing person. We're still good friends. And she stayed with me for three years. And we were able to, like, elevate it, you know, and get some extra help. And now we have, like, a team of, like, 15 people, which is so great, you know, because it takes a lot of hands to make this stuff come together. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's just, it's been a crazy ride. And I love it. And it's, just, it's, it's been so like inspiring and very blessed to, I get to do what I love to do every day. And I was just going to ask you from early on, did you know that you always wanted to go into like the catering route or cooking? Like, did you always knew that was your calling? You know, I, I think so. Like I knew it, but I didn't know it. So I planned my first party when I was 14 years old. It was my best friend's birthday. She's born on St. Patrick's day. So she was turning 15 and I planned this whole secret surprise birthday party and I pulled it off like it was a surprise it was decorated I was like 14 no car you know mom taking me to the dollar store like it was wild but when I think back I'm like wow like I've always loved parties I've always loved events um you know I've had a subscription to Martha Stewart magazine since I was 12 like I so yeah I guess I kind of always knew but I just you know it didn't like click and then culinary school came along I did that pretty much just to fill a gap. Like I knew I had to go to school. I, I didn't know anything about cooking, but turns out I have a knack for it. Thank God. (laughs) And so it just like, it all kind of worked out, you know, like my story is like a story of destiny. I feel like, you know, it's just, it all kind of worked out. That's amazing Mm -hmm. though. So from there on, you're like, okay, you went to culinary school and you loved it, which Mm -hmm. luckily you did. Thank God I was good at it. Yeah. (laughs) And then from there, like I'm ready to go into learning. So you did, what would you say to someone who's starting new in the business? Isn't it very important to first kind of gain insight from another company or work with other people so that way you kind of find Mm -hmm. what kind of business route you want to take? Yeah. I think start somewhere with a company that inspires you and that you see it's a direction you want to go in. Don't go into it like, oh, I'm going to steal their customers. Don't be like anything like that. But go into it where you can go to work and enjoy yourself and learn because it takes a lot to to learn this industry. Like yeah. doing one event, you know, planning your own wedding doesn't make you a wedding planner. You know, like you have to really hustle and you have to learn and you have to be humble. 
Like you have to be humble and know that you really don't know anything until you've been doing this for like a while. You know, there's you so never stop learning. Oh my God. Yeah. We, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sitting here 10 years and I'm, you know, I'm telling you we've been in business 10 years, but I still feel like the new person on, you know, like I still feel like this little baby that doesn't know anything, you know? Like, but I think that's very important because it also makes it so you respect the artistry in every way. Yes. And you have to, my, one of my number one things that I like to tell people is be friends with your competition. Like, I can't tell you how many times I pick up the phone and I call another caterer. Hey, can I borrow this? Hey, um, what do you think about this? What would you do? What do you put on your contract? I mean, being friends with your competition is one of the biggest things that you can do to like elevate you. Number one, there's no bad blood. You know, you have friends everywhere you go. There's no weirdness, you know? And then you have this, when you become a business owner, like you don't have any coworkers. You only have yourself. Like, and for that first two or three years, you just have you. So if you're an a-hole to people, you know, you really isolate yourself. So being friends with your competition is a great way to build a network and a community with this job that you love to do. That is so amazing that you are so honest and say that because I feel like a lot of the times when people enter this business. Don't be an a-hole. When people people enter this business, they think, oh my God, I have to like be ruthless and, Mm. you know, that's my competition. I can't be friends with them. And I think it's amazing what you just said, the fact that befriend them. Like, Mm -hmm. there's enough for everyone in the business to make money. My other catering friends, like, we kick jobs back and forth to each other. You know, like, I wasn't able to do an event for February 24th. I kicked it over to Palm Beach Catering. They're going to profit 40 grand. You know, like, I mean, you know, it's just, it's a community. Like, you know, you want to, you want to have people that you can call because being on your own as a, as a business owner, it's lonely as it is. And then you get these customers that like kick you and beat you up over pricing. So it's really important. Cause you get all kinds of personalities. Which... Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Now I was going to ask you the next thing, which is how do you deal with your clients? Like how do you, is there a briefing process Email. for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like you kind of, you know, in a metaphysical way, you you get what you put out there, you know? So I try to be a good person and I want to work with good people. Like I I really can't tolerate the divas, you know? I, I will straight up tell them I don't have the date available. You know, if you call me and you are pushy or there's something off, I won't even deal with it, you know. So Sorry, you, you kind of available. so you kind of brief over the phone. So you you make sure to have a point of contact of some sort, yeah, with a potential client before you kind of decipher like yeah. are they going to be complicated? I answer all my phone calls. Like I try to answer the phone as much as possible, and you know even when I'm driving on ninety five, I'll answer the phone. Hey, tell me a little bit about your event. Not sure if I have the date available, but tell me a little bit about your event when I get back to my desk. I'll check and see if I have the date. So I listen about the event. Where is it being held? How many guests is it? You know, and then when they fill out the quote request form, I'll be able to send them a quote or decline it. And then when we do decline it, we try to decline it to another caterer who maybe is a little smaller or growing their business or or someone that might be good that, you know, not every caterer is good for every client. You know, there's better fits for people. Mm -hmm. So we try to help. We try to help them find somebody you know yeah you kind of just don't leave them in the dark no, and it's kind of nice that you that you if you're not able to mm-hmm. assist them you at least will lead them to another point of mm-hmm. contact which yeah. is amazing who's a better fit yeah. yeah so what are some of the horror stories that you've dealt with clients i really have like a whole lot of horror stories but like I mean, one memorable one even when we were first starting think about the client that called and said like they wanted all this and you were so excited or oh, okay okay i got one okay, okay. yeah can't say their name, but they no, own we say dates. It's this lady, uh, her family, you know, she's like in her 70s. Her family owned a, a sports team, and um, she had us come and do a dinner outside. And it was probably like a year or two after COVID, but she was still very scared. Um, and she didn't tell me prior, or the assistant didn't tell me prior, that we wouldn't be able to have any access to the home. So we got there. We're supposed to do this plated dinner for 30 people. We're not allowed in the house. So you so have no kitchen usage. No running water. She gave us, like, this little grill area, you know, like this little outdoor kitchen, but it's a, it was just a grill. Yeah. 
Okay, so we made no that water. work. Yeah, no running water. And then they locked the bathrooms outside of the house so my servers couldn't use the bathrooms. And then when they, we were able to go into the house to return her little cutlery, we had to put on booties. You know, it was just a mess. Well, let me tell you, she called, her new assistant called two weeks ago. Oh, hey, Mrs. So-and-so wants to hire you again. Oh, I'm sorry. Date not available. <laughs> you know, yeah. I just, I fool me once, great, but I won't go back. You know, like, yeah. I'm not going to do it. So, you that's, know, that's, if my staff can't yeah. use the bathroom, you know, maybe you shouldn't be entertaining. That's you rough, know, yeah. don't have people over if you're scared to have people over. No, that's true. Especially, yeah. like, what if, like, what do you do if you use the bathroom? Exactly. You know, would you rather bush. pee in the bushes? Like, the bush. I don't understand what is a better alternative. So, yeah, we ended up getting inside the bathroom that day, but it was just like a, it was like an ordeal, and it, it made my staff feel less than. And it's I would never really put them back in that situation. So that was probably like like one horror story that I can think of. Is that's rough. Yeah, <laughs> this is so and so. Yeah, we won't say names, but that's enough. <laughs> She's not gonna watch this. <laughs> so. But then what about, you know, staff? How did you go about finding your staff, training? Yeah. Like, I, I'm able to keep my staff by being a very organized caterer. So I find that when I do my job well and I communicate and I'm organized and I don't make the party, you know, shit show, that people want to come back and work for me. Um, so we try to keep the same staff all the time. I pay people well. I don't try to cut corners. I just pass that on to the client. You know, hey, listen, this is what it costs. Mm -hmm. If you want to hire us, great. Uh, if you don't, that's okay. Um, but I try to pay them well. I try to be organized. I just try to be friendly. You know, like if we do a big wedding, I'll order pizza for everybody two hours ahead of time so everybody gets something to eat. Little things like that. Just be respectful um, and create a nice working environment. That's important. No, for sure. And yeah. then... So with your team, like, how do you go about training them? Like, you know, because it's the same thing. It's like finding the right fit yeah. of your team. Like, I think that's a big hurdle a lot of business owners deal with. It's like finding the right fit mm -hmm. for your team that you feel like this is my solid team, which I feel like you've gotten to mm -hmm. that place. Yeah. No, I'm very lucky. So um, being in Palm Beach, there was um, quite a few caterers that had been in business for like 30 years. So... I actually, when after COVID, two of them went out of business, and I inherited their team, which was already trained. Thank God. Um, I don't have any human resource training or, you know, I just honestly try to be a good, hardworking person, and I try to lead by example, but I'm a chef. Like, I don't know about table service and pouring wine. Like, so when I first got started, I had no idea about any of that. But, you know, you just hire a few people that do know what to do, and then they kind of train, and then you lead by example, and, you know, do we have, like, sit-down classes or anything? No, but we try to train on the on the job, and my biggest thing is over-explain, you know, because I remember, like, when I was a young chef, I would go to these events, and I would just be like, oh, wow, just in awe, and I didn't know anything that was going on because nobody was talking. Nobody was telling you. Yeah. So I actually try to over explain things and, and try to teach people. So you get everyone on the same page. Try to. You know, some are going to get it. Some aren't going to get it. You know, but I mean, you'll when you start to have your team, you'll naturally see who picks it up, who doesn't. You know, and you just go with the ones that are getting it. Don't waste your time on people, you know, the idiots. <laughs> just, just let them go. But, you know, you're like, it's try a good to thing if it's keep, not a good fit. Yeah, find, a, find good people. Try to get more good people. You know, like, usually the good people have friends. And, and that's just how you kind of get started is you, you know, hopefully the Lord blesses you with one or two good people and you can build on that. Yeah, I completely agree. And I love what you said about you, let, you lead by example. So, that is a key thing I always tell everyone, like business owners, as soon as they think boss, they think of like a dictator. So yeah, I always yeah. say there's a difference between a dictator and a leader. So a dictator just tells people what to do, yeah. but a leader inspires you. They motivate you. They, they, they pinpoint what your strength is mm -hmm. and heighten you to that and, right. and teach you. So I think it's very important because like you said, the fact that you took a Disney trip, I'm like, I want to go. Like. <laughs> That's amazing <laughs> because you're making sure that everyone's on the same page yeah. and you're inspiring them because that's a big way to inspire someone yeah. with a concept. 
as a business owner, a small business owner, you are going to set the pace for your business. You set the pace. So if you're sitting down, chilling on your phone at an event, well, your staff is going to think that's okay. And, you know, it's your fault. I mean, anything that goes wrong with our company, I always just, I'm always like, well, it's my fault. Even if it's not really my fault, it is my fault because it comes back to me no matter what. So I think it's important to set the tone and lead by example. Like on an event day, I'm the first one unloading a truck. I'm the first one like, you know, moving coolers. I just, I'm a natural worker, so I can't help it. But like, you just, you set the tone, you know, you lead by example and you just start working and then people will fall. They'll be like, oh, whoa, the boss is doing that, you know, and they'll, they'll try to chip in, you know, so you just lead by example. If you work, they will work, you know. That's a good way to like yeah. definitely put it. So let's talk about how do you get your clients? So okay. the secrets. <laughs> yeah, no, we're getting to the secrets, the good stuff. Um, like, no, like seriously, because I always say like, when you're starting in the business, right? Mm-hmm. We all just kind of take on certain jobs at the very beginning, right? You're not as nitpicky, but 10 years, once you've paid your dues, you're like, yeah. I know my worth. Mm-hmm. so how did what was that turning point for you where you're just like I have my menu these are my you know right. prices this this is what it is no I'm not right we're not gonna be haggling all day well it took me probably like six years to learn that the cheap clients are actually the hardest clients like you think oh they're gonna be cheap easy no 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 they're trying to stretch a dollar in unimaginable ways and they're trying to get everything that they see on their Pinterest board for nothing. So they don't even understand. Like they're the cheap clients are so ignorant, they don't even know that what they're asking for is completely unrealistic. So whereas someone with money and with a budget understands and they're more appreciative. That's just what I've learned. The cheap clients are harder. Yeah, um, because they don't realize that those Pinterest photos, there's understand. like editing. There's like you know how they see something, they're like, I want that crazy display, and you're just like, that's yeah. Not real. Nope. So we try to educate a client first off by sending a proposal. Like even if they say my budget is $50 a person for a wedding. Okay. Yeah. We see your budget. We're going to send you a proposal of what it really costs to educate them. So at least it's easier on the next guy, you know, so they can see that they're unrealistic right off the bat. So we do try to educate. We will send you a quote. (laughs) I mean, if we have the data available, (laughs) we will send you a quote. But I think it's important that, you know, you take jobs in the beginning that you can do, that you can do well, that you'll, you'll be able to Instagram and post, like you still have to learn and pay your dues. Like, you know, so take, take a job, like if you can do it and you can do it well, take it. If you make some type of money, take it. Um, And you also want to keep your team. If you have a team at that point working, you know, you want to keep the train going a little bit. So take those jobs and then you never know who you're going to meet at an event. You never know who that person's going to invite or what doors are going to open. So, you know, when you're first getting started, just, just, just work, you know, just make, make whatever you can. And then, you know, it's like a, it's a lily pad thing. You know, you, you, You'll get better and better and, and it'll, keep going. Yeah, and, and you'll move on. You know, my first wedding, you guys, was at a trailer park. Like it was, <laughs> it was a trailer the park in Lantana. Did. It was at Sand and Sea, and it was in a clubhouse. And it was a sweet little lady. It was her second marriage. She wasn't from this country, but her theme was fall, and there was literally scarecrows like everywhere. Scarecrows and those dollar store fall leaves I mean yeah. that it was hideous you know but yeah. I was so happy to be there it was my first wedding somebody trusted me to do their damn wedding you know so and how much were you like I how much did that I think, come we, out to? I think we charged like $30 a person I don't know yeah. but but like I look back at it and I tell people all the time my my first wedding was at a trailer park like look at us now like we're at the Flagler you know doing hundred thousand dollar weddings like so I mean you just never just start yeah. Just start, you know, if this is what you love to do, just start and try to make some type of living at it, you know? Yeah, it's, it's the main thing, like you said, you have to start somewhere and know mm-hmm. that that's not where you're going to stay. Like, it's important to not say stagnant yeah. or give yeah. up because I'm sure there was a lot of hurdles that you were like at the beginning. You're like, can I do this? Yeah. Is this what I want? I had no idea how much paperwork was involved. I'll tell you that. I had <laughs> no idea. Yeah. 
And how did you learn with all that? Like, I don't know. I mean, just like little by little, you know, like you send a proposal and then then you look at another proposal. You're like, okay, maybe I can make it like this. And then you learn how to do invoices and just, just, you have to just jump. You know, if you're thinking about starting a business, just do it and you'll learn how to fly on the way down. <laughs> oh that's what they say right yeah that's no, true you'll learn you know like you just kind of figure it out and if you the thing is is if you have the passion and you love what you're doing you're gonna like stay up late at night and study and and try to get it right I mean like those first five years of owning this business I think I took like one day off a month I mean I would I'm always working you know but because I like it it's kind of fun for me, you yeah. know? It doesn't feel like such work. As a designer and also as a future bride-to-be, I have one store that I cannot stop going to, and that's Event Decor Direct. Event Decor Direct has your one-stop shop for all decor items from fabrics to hardware to ceiling draping to dance floor wrap prints and so much more. It is honestly obsessing how much I can just look through here and I'm like, Hmm, I should add that to my event. As all of you that are listeners and viewers, you get iWet Uncut 11 as your code to get 11% off on the website. All you have to do is put iWet Uncut 11 to get 11% off. And you will see that your design process will become so much easier. So whether you're a designer, a bride to be, or someone who just loves the industry and loves designing, this is your one stop shop. And you're constantly staying up to date with things, which I think is important. Yeah. part to this all that I, I'm sure you if there's a new place a restaurant that opens or I'm there. you know you're the, yeah you're there you eat I always say there's an EBL life it's kind of something I may know which is you eat breathe and live your passion mm -hmm. yeah. you're constantly because it, it's required yeah. in order to get inspired and you that's what makes you like stand out during the test of time is the fact that you're constant on trends that you're right. not you're not staying late on the train you're like above yeah. where you're going. I try to set the trend actually a little bit, you know, like yeah. just try to, because I love what I do, you know, like I just, I want to constantly innovate, you know, like I'm in a competition with myself, you know, like you're always trying to outdo yourself. So you're not focused on others mm -hmm. and that's a key thing. I mean, like sometimes I'll get down looking at social media, you know, like you get the Debbie Downers you, cause you're like, Oh, my stuff isn't that good or that, they're more creative yeah. or wow. You know, they have the like, social media noise. That oh, <laughs> you know, so just don't look at that. You know, like just you're, you're in a race against yourself, you know, to be better than, than when you started, you know, and if you're constantly working and moving, you'll get there. You know, you'll look back after five years and you'll be like, Holy crap. You know, yeah. Look how far I've come. That's so true, though. Mm -hmm. And I have to highlight on the fact that you are amazing at your vendor relationships. I just want to thank you. We're going to get into that now. Then my vendors. <laughs> I would say, Laura, seeing you at events, the way it was funny because we met through a mutual, um, you know, vendor relationship. She was like, "You have to meet Laura. She's a sweetheart." And this, like, and then. I w and I realized that you do a lot of vendor events, and you, yeah. you're really good with your connections. Speak a little bit about that, like how important it is to so important. nurture those relationships and build on that, especially when you're like starting in the business and even all the way through, because I, I bet when you first started, even to now, you still take care of those relationships the same. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you know, I'm just naturally a friendly person, but when I got into this, I didn't know anybody, but I had something special. I had food and beverage, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you like, people, I have something special to give. I have something for you. Um, but, you know, I think it's not about the degrees you have or it's about the hands you shake, you know? Like, it's about networking and you're going to attract more bees with honey, right? That's what they say. So, I mean, it's being a friendly person, a genuine person, and, you know, trying to come up with those relations, build relationships. I, I was going to networking events and, and actually I'm kind of introverted, you know, it's in really? my, yeah, in my day to day life. I mean, you know, I'm not, I don't like to really be in the spotlight, but I, my friend Kathy, she was pushing me to all these networking events and it's, you know, by the way, Kathy, CBK, right? yeah, yeah, she was our first podcast guest. Oh That's God. how Kathy's so OG. <laughs> One knows her. <laughs> yeah. Kathy's the ultimate networker. And I mean, she knows everybody. So I was trained by Kathy how to network, you know, she would just take me everywhere and introduce me and 
Kathy like believed in me when when I didn't even believe in myself. Oh, so that's yeah. There's, Shout out to Kathy. She's, she's like the yeah. Find yourself a mentor. That's for sure. You know, find someone that's been in the business longer than you and just like cling to them like glue. You know. So, um, but networking is huge. Going out and meeting people, them seeing your face. Um, you know, whenever there's an opportunity to do something for free for your your peers in the industry, do it and don't do a half-assed job because you know just because it's free doesn't mean you just you know just give her whatever. No, know. you should be doing the best job because all of those people there are potential clients. You know, like we saw this last night, yeah. like when we went. You know. Do a good job so that way people know your brand, they recognize you. They're impressed by it and it's yeah. potential people that are going to book you. When people say the word caterer, I want them to think of next, Laura, Laura the caterer. And yeah. I, I introduce myself that way to be, hi, I'm Laura the caterer. You know, like I want people to think of me. You have your elevator pitch down. Yes. You know, so it's important, you know, get out there, make a lot of friends because people hire their friends, right? Like. Yeah. If I'm working a wedding, you know, I want you and you there with me for 12 hours that day because we're buds, you know. Yeah. So people hire their friends. So um, it's important that you maintain relationships and don't be an anal. You know? <laughs> be, be nice. nice. <laughs> be nice. And be yeah, nice take care of people yeah. and they'll take care of you, you know, and they'll send you the good clients. And, you know, people want to refer someone who's nice. Like, I'm not going to refer someone that's going to be a jerk to my client. That makes me look bad. Yeah, you that's know? so true. So, like, be a good person. And how did you get into starting your annual Halloween party? Oh, my God. Yeah. Which is this epic Halloween party to anyone in Palm Beach. You have to <laughs> definitely follow uh, Laura's social media accounts yeah. so that when she announces it, you guys are yeah. knowledgeable of it. They're amazing. Like, it's an experience. Thank How you. did this all start? Well, you know, I, like, got into this business, and I'm like, nobody does a Halloween party. And I was so surprised. Like, here's all these creative people. Halloween is, like, the ultimate, hol like, holiday to do a fun party. Nobody did a Halloween party. And then clients weren't calling for Halloween. And I was just so, like, why? I couldn't, I couldn't figure like, it out. To figure it yeah, out. I was like, I'm not getting hired. You know, so I was like, well, damn it. I'm going to do my own Halloween party. And so we booked with Old School Square. They gave, you know, the idea is we don't want to spend a ton of money. We bring all these vendors together. It's a we, collaborative process. Yeah, and we, like, blast everybody and try to, you know, lift everybody up. I'll take people that are new in the industry, people that have been there a while, and we try to collaborate so, um, yeah, we're going into year three. And that's um, like a barter almost in a way, right? With the vendors. Yeah, so I try to get the venue for free because that's like the most important part. And that brings traffic to the venue. And then we just, hey, if you want to be a part of this year, you know, reach out to me. Like, this is the theme. Um, you know, we just try to take it from there. And it's it's growing. You know, we need we need good sponsors because, you know, it's it's a lot of work. But yeah. it's a lot of fun. And it's great because you're doing a networking mixer yeah. and it brings everyone together. Yes. Yeah, that's the idea. We want to get everybody together and just have a good time. You know, you don't have to pay a membership fee. You don't have to be in a special club. You know, just come, hang out, dress up. Let's have fun and, you know, celebrate Halloween on a Wednesday night. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And then I get to be creative and, you know, I get to do what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. You get to do <laughs> yeah. a whole theme. Which mm -hmm. I was going to ask you now, how do you come up, well, I guess, what is a process with your company then? So, you know, most clients have a concept or theme for their wedding, right? Yeah. So let's say I come to you and I say, listen, I want this theme. Do you kind of help guide them into a, like a, like a better direction or do you completely have to sit and draft like what menu because you, you're very good with clicking the concept yeah. and telling the story, which I absolutely love that. I geek out over that. Yeah. Tell us about that. Um, so I will say that most now we work with a lot of planners and the planners have their own, the, the planner and the client have their own vision for the day. Um, but, you know, clients will come to me, hey, we got engaged in Tuscany. We want to have this type of dinner. And then I roll with that. Um, so if they give me some elements where I can be creative, of course we will do that. Um, we try to guide our clients with menus that we already have of what we know works. 
you know? Um, but we can definitely customize. I have no problem doing that. But I will say, for the most part, we try to stay in our lane as far as the planning goes. Like, I'm a great caterer. I'm not a planner. Sometimes people think I'm a planner. And I am not a planner. But I'm a good caterer. You know, so I can help you in aspects of creativity. But, you know, you're, the, the person you hire to plan is really the person that, like, gets to know you, your vision. Is with you. That whole yeah. Process. And reach out to them. Like, they are a huge advocate. And they're going to know, like, what vendors to hire. Who's best, you know, like, not every person is right for every client. So your planner is really the best person to know who to hire for, for these types of things. But... Um, yes, we will customize. We will do anything creative. You give me the opportunity to be creative, I will go all out for you. No yeah. problem. And how is it working within the Palm Beach market? Which I is love amazing. That. I mean, you're already at Flagler. You're at the, uh, you work all the major hotels and even the yeah. like country clubs and everything. Yeah, so um, we are at some exclusive properties, which is amazing, you know. You go from Trailer Park to the Flagler. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. But, it so, is. The Flagler is a beautiful venue. Make sure to yeah. <laughs> 50 grand to have your wedding there. But um, so it's it's beautiful, like, the growth that we've seen. Everybody, I feel like all of California is moving to South Florida. Um, oh, my God. Some, has the traffic that's just getting it's wild. It's wild. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> there's no shortage of people moving here and, and new business. Everybody bought a home two years ago during COVID. Now they all want to have, um, you know, a, a welcoming party because they got everything remodeled and it's beautiful. So there's lots of clients. Um, I love that they're a little bit more. Re- I feel like in Palm Beach, they're a little more relaxed, you know, it, I don't know. I just, I love the Palm Beach market. Like Miami is like almost a little too, too much, you know, for me, but, um, and the drive is dangerous, you know, <laughs> so we like to stay up, uh, you know, in Palm Beach County as much as possible, but we will travel. We'll go to Isla Morada. We'll go to Miami. We'll go to Vero. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been crazy. You know, COVID changed everything. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see the growth in years to come. And was it that you defined your target market or is it something that naturally came about your life? Yeah, I'm born and raised in Palm Beach County. So, like, I just know how to get around. True Floridian. Yeah, yeah, true Floridian. Um, It's just my home, you know, so that's where I felt comfortable starting. And that's where I worked, you know, in the years before my business. That's where all my training was. And, um, you know, I worked for other catering companies. And so it's just, it's my home, you know, so... I'm happy that I'm a part of it because the growth we're going to see in Palm Beach County is like unbelievable. All these New York companies are coming here and, Mm -hmm. and all these um, LA companies are coming here and I'm like, thank God I'm already established, you know, and I'm not going to be pushed out. Yeah. Um, So I feel really fortunate that we're, we're already established in Palm Beach because everybody wants to be there. Yeah, absolutely. It has a, Definitely, a, a, it's a good fusion of not too wild mm-hmm. and not too sleepy. It's gotten better because Palm yeah. Beach, everyone thinks of, like, retired area. Yeah, no. no. And it's, it definitely has, like, it's hit spots and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, everybody's moving there. You know, they want to get out of the city. It's the, you know, it's Miami meets the Hamptons. You know, it's, like, be- still beautiful areas to live, not, you know, not too much crime, not too much trash. And, you know, it's just a beautiful place to call home. I love it. Yeah, I love I love West Palm. So we always do fire around questions. It's become a thing. So you're gonna be picking out two questions. Okay. You have no idea what the questions are in there, but you're gonna to have to answer them. Okay. So whatever comes to your mind first. You got it. Pick it out now. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. What's the most significant lesson or piece of advice you've received in your personal life that has had a lasting impact on you? Hmm. The timer starts now. (laughs) (laughs) On the spot. Um, I think I'd like to go back to, you know, being friends with your competition. Like, it is so important to maintain relationships and be kind and friendly. And because then, you know, like, people want to help you. And they want to, they want to mentor you and they want to, they want to help you is the most important thing. You know, like we can't do this alone. You know, I can't cater a wedding by myself, you know, like I'm just one person. So 
I think being a good person and having, you know, a good team and just, it, it makes everything easier, you know? And to I guess to add to that, how did you make that connection and reach out? Like, how do you go about doing that? You're like, instead of, like, especially if you're both in the same industry, how do you make that mm -hmm. link? I think stepping out of your comfort zone and, like, going and, and trying to connect with people is so huge because when you're a business owner, you're, like, on your own, you yeah. know? So making an effort to go and try to connect and have relationships is really going to take you places because people want to work with their friends, you know? Mm -hmm. People want to, you know, people want to be accepted. Everybody is, you know, trying to connect, and so that's going to help you a lot. Has any competitor ever been snarky with you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, when I first got started, everybody's like, who is that? You know, like they were like, who is that girl? Laura Ashley, who is that? And then I think they realized that, like, I wasn't a threat, you know, so to speak. Like, I was talented. I think everybody could see that I was, you know, talented and going somewhere. But then when they got to know me, they were like, oh, she that's just little Laura, like our little sister, you know, like we're proud of her, you know, um, like I, I felt it was really important that my competitors knew, like I was cheering them on as much as they were hopefully cheering me on, you know, yeah. like I wasn't trying to go after their clients. I was honest. I was trying to do, I was just trying to do my job and, you know, be a good person. So I think that's important. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Second yeah. question. <laughs> One more. Okay. You only have one more. That's <laughs> okay. Um, what's the most unexpected or bizarre event, theme, or request you've ever received from a client? Most unexpected. Bizarre. I don't know. That's hard to say. I feel like the themes keep repeating themselves, you know? There hasn't been anything wacky like involving sex or anything. There's so there's nothing. <laughs> you haven't gone to any of those type of parties. Not yet. yet. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> bizarre. Um, I don't really can't really think of anything too bizarre. I would like to do a marijuana party. I think that would be fun. Oh. Like a THC party, you know, oh, like cool. with different like cannabis and food and stuff. I think that would be fun, but nobody's asked me yet. Um, but I'm I'm up for bizarre, you know and. I love how you're like, I'm up for the challenge. Yeah, hit me up. Yeah. Um, but no, nobody's really actually reached out with anything too crazy. I'm trying to think. No, it's been pretty Nothing like normal. normal. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of anything. If there is. I'm trying to think of, like, I don't know, a, a, a wedding request that was like, even like food wise, like we're pricing with, I don't know, they wanted something for this and they were adamant. Mm -hmm. Some, I don't know. No, not too I mean, I try to keep, you know, I only like to choose, you know, because it's very much like I choose them as much as they choose me. So mm -hmm. I try to keep a, a good clientele, not too wacky. But um, no, nothing too bizarre. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> but I'm ready for some bizarre. I think that'd be fun, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. I had a bride in a black wedding dress one time. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, and, and I've had a Star Wars, a couple Star Wars weddings. Have you had yeah. any Pokemon weddings? No. That, no. What? No. No. But Star Wars, Wars weddings? No. Um, yes. We did a butter bar one time. A butter beer bar. Oh. Yeah. They were like, they were into Harry Potter, but the whole thing wasn't Harry Potter. But we've done two Star Wars weddings, which were unique. You know, those are fun. Yeah, but you get yeah. to do But I love a theme. Like, if anybody calls me with a theme, like, that is, like, my life. You know? So... I would love some bizarre, but I can't think of anything too bizarre. Okay. That's fine. I'm sorry to disappoint. No, okay. <laughs> so I feel like our audience loves personal stories and you really are a success. Like you, kudos you. to you and props to you with your business and everything you've accomplished. What would you, what would be a piece of advice you'd give to someone who's starting in the event business? Yeah, just do it. You know, it's, it's all baby steps, you know, just do it. Pick your name for your business, start your Instagram, go get your bank account. You know, I, I've actually helped a few friends open businesses, so you can always call me. I'll give you advice on how to start a business. I love starting new businesses. It's so fun. Um, but just start, you know, like if you look at the obstacles ahead of you and, and the challenges, 
you might not you might not start. I don't know if I would have started. Honestly, like if you would have told me 10 years ago you're going to do this, this, this and this, like I probably would have ran for the hills. But because I was I don't want to say ignorant, but because I I just didn't have the vision at the time, you know, I only saw like the tree in front of me. I just I didn't realize what was ahead. So it's almost good to like jump into it blindly, I think, because if you are looking for something that can go wrong, you know, you might not, you, you might the not overthink start, it. Yeah, yeah, don't overthink it. Just start it. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, it's okay. You know, you can go get another job, you know, but I think just start right off the bat. And that comes to the fact that, like you said, baby steps, which is key when you're starting your business. For sure. I think a lot of the times, especially creatives, we want to, like, eat the world in the sense, like, mm-hmm. have the whole picture and map out all the steps, A to Z, what can go wrong. Because yeah. we're, like, plan A, plan B, plan Z. Like, mm-hmm. we plan all the way. And when you're starting your business, it's not just that simple. It's yeah. start with what you have because you don't, like, I'm sure, like, when you were first starting, like, oh, I would really love to get, you know, these tools. I would love this, but yeah. that's X amount of dollars. Like, you feel like you need everything. At the beginning. Right. You don't. Just start with where yeah. you're at. Give yourself grace. Start your business. And then what I used to do is, like, I like on a night that I didn't have a party booked, I would go work for another caterer, you know, just to, like, keep income coming in. But it's so good to, like, expand your network. Um, But just I think it's really important to just start, you know, just – and give yourself grace. Like you're not, you're not going to go into it being like a million dollar company in your first year. Like it's just not going to, it's not going to be that way, you know. So take it all as a learning experience, and you know, be kind to yourself. Don't compare yourself to a bunch of people. You know, just do the best that you can do. As long as your clients are happy, like you're doing okay. You know, make your clients happy. Try to do some really good quality work. Invest in your phone with a camera that's good you know like so you can like take your pictures you know try to like do little things that are going to make a big difference but ultimately just have fun like we all have to work you know yeah. so like just try to have as much fun as you can and find your strength and your yeah, focus yeah exactly because everyone has one yeah exactly you know and you're going to do it different than someone else don't compare yourself to a bunch of people you know you can't compare yourself to a company that has 40 employees you know, with like graphic designers and all these artists, like you just, just start and have fun and try to do the best you can. And to end, is there any slogan or quote or any type of mantra that you could recommend Mm -hmm. to our audience listening and watching? Yeah. So my sister's 10 years younger. And when she was growing up, I always told her, I'm like, Shelby, all you have to do is Try 1% harder than everybody else. You don't have to go crazy. You just have to put 1% more effort into it and you will be better. Like, just try to do a little extra, you know, just try to be 1% better. And it goes a long way. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not so overwhelming, you know, 1%. Yeah. You can do 1%. Yeah, every yeah. day. Mm-hmm. That's a good. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing that. You're That's welcome. Awesome. <laughs> so thank you so much for being. Hey, guys, taking the time. You're a busy woman. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just so happy that you came on the podcast to truly appreciate it. And hope all of you listen to all those golden nuggets that you gave Thank and you. shared because 10 years in business, congrats. And check out her website and her Instagram. You see amazing work. And if you are ever in the area in October for her Halloween party, you yes. have to at least check out one of her epic parties. Yes. Yeah. Or so now I sponsor it. Be a sponsor. Or be a sponsor, <laughs> yes. And I'll make sure to pop um down below all her social media handles so that way you're able to follow her and check out her work. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Laura. This is a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you to all of you that watched and listened and catch up the next episode.